In this video, we're going to take a look at characters and fonts inside of Photoshop. So characters is going to refer to the specific letters or numbers, symbols, or glyphs that you're working on an individual basis. So the letter A, the letter B, the number one, the number two, the trademark symbol, those are characters. The fonts is going to be the font or the font family that is used to stylize those characters. So the actual way that they look. Let's go and add in some type real quick. We'll just type hello. Let's get this uh, centered up here. Let's make sure we're aligned to the center. Okay, we are. And somewhere around here should be the center point. Oh, there it was. Well, that's pretty close. Okay, so we have this uh, type here, and this type is made up of characters, the H, E, L, L, and the O characters. Now we can adjust these individual. We'll look at those in a minute. If I click on the type tool, I have the ability to change its fonts or its font families and all the settings that the font family contains. So if I go to the top and I click on where it says Arial, there's a drop down box. These are all the different fonts or font families inside of Photoshop that we can choose. As I scroll over these, you can see that we get a preview and it changes those out for us. Now what we have is we have different types of font families and within those we have all of our different fonts. Now if you ever need to add any fonts in here you can add them directly from Typekit which is a service Adobe provides for adding in more type or fonts to your designs. I'm going to go ahead and click on that button real quick and open it up. And here you can see Typekit with all of the different fonts that we can install into Photoshop. Now I'm logged into my account, but if you look on the right hand side, you can see what says classification and these are the different types of font family classifications. So you can see we have sans serif, we have serif, which means that it's adding those little uh, curly things at the tops and bottoms of our letters. We have a slab serif. We have script, which is more handwritten. We have black letter. We have mono. We have handwritten types and decorative types. So if we pick, like, say, the serifs, we're going to see all of the ones that have serifs. And those you can see all those little curlies at the tops of the letters. Whereas if we pick hand, we're going to get a lot of handwritten type fonts. So these are the different classifications and font families that we can choose. And then whenever we click on one of these, so let's say we like this Cantoni one, and we click on it, it's going to bring up all the details about that font, uh, including all of its different stylings and availabilities. So this one only has two. It's got regular and bold, which means it doesn't come pre-made with a italicized or thin or anything like that, like our Arial does. So let's go back to Photoshop and take a look at that. I just wanted to show you what the font families are made up of. And here we are back inside of Photoshop. So now if I go to Arial, you can see that that is a type of font that we have selected, a sans serif. It doesn't have those serifs. And we can see that we have different types where the other one, Cantoni, had uh, bold and regular. This one allows us to have a narrow style, a regular style, an italicized style and so forth. So between all of the different fonts and font families you can select and all the ways you can style them, you can get a lot of different looks inside of Photoshop. You can change the sizes, the alignment, the uh, way it's colored, and then also you can warp it or turn it into 3D. Let's go ahead and take a look at the individual character adjustments that you can also make. So we can click on this icon at the top to open up our uh, character panel here, or you can go to window and click on character and it will open up this panel, which will give us more options to the individual characters that we have. So we have our font here where we see Arial. We have the different styles that we can give it, italic, bold, and everything that we just looked at. We have our size. And then we have some other options here. So we have different options such as changing the leading, uh, the kerning, and also the tracking for different characters within this font. So let's just go ahead and we'll click back in here to edit this. And we're just going to hit enter so that we can see uh, two sentences here. So you can see what we can work with on the individual character here. So now, 
we have the ability to change the actual size. So let's say we wanted to make that a little bit smaller. We can make it 200 or we can make it 300, make it big again. And then we can change these other things. So the first one that we have here is the leading. So if we change the leading, you can see what it does. It has moved up the bottom sentence to the top sentence. And because the font's so big, these points are pretty small. They're not doing much. So if we change that to 200, you can see where it is on the sentence. Maybe we want them to touch. So we can do, we can find that out 150. So here they are touching. Or maybe we want them very far away from each other. Oops, I went too high. So we have 300 where there's more spacing. Then we have the ability to set the actual kerning. So this is between uh, multiple letters. Uh, we can change this to optical. You see it scoots them in. And then we have the ability to space them out. Uh, tracking does something similar. It allows us to space out those letters further apart from one another or bring them even closer in if we want to. So we have the ability to move them that way. We also have the ability here uh, to vertically or horizontally scale these. So if we go ahead and bring those numbers up, you can see that they're being scaled vertically. And this one will scale the actual letters themselves horizontally. And then we're not using any of the special characters here, um, but you can have a baseline shift. So if you're using um, special characters like, say, uh, B squared, you could have that baseline be at a different level. You can change the color directly right here if you want to. So that makes that nice and easy to do. And then we have a lot of extra options that we have here. So fall bold. This is the one that I mentioned previously that if you are having trouble editing your text, uh, turn that off. It bolds out the text in a false style. Um, it's usually turned on by default, but I turn it off. You can italicize this text. And then we have some other options here. So we can make it all caps, uh, small caps. We can make it super scripted. So um, let's say, let's see, let's take... Maybe we want to superscript the word R. We can do that. So it makes it off that baseline. Or we can uh, subscript it, which is below the line. And then uh, we can underline these two. So if we want to underline, we can do that. Or we can strike through if we need to strike through a part of the word. Then we have some more information here down at the bottom. So uh, standard uh, ligatures, um, contextual alternatives, discretionary ligatures, swash, stylistic at alternatives, tilt, uh, titling alternatives, ordinals and fractions. So these are different um, symbols and ways of displaying information. I'm not going to go into every one of these right now. If you look at Adobe's uh, documentation, it will talk all about each one of these. So some of these I don't use too often. Some of them I use them all the time. I'm probably going to want to use the tracking to space characters away, the sizing, uh, the scaling, and if I want them to be maybe all caps or strike through, subscript, superscript. Those are the ones I commonly use. But you can change all of these on a per character basis and you can get a lot of really different looking designs with Photoshop based on all the fonts you can choose, the font families, the way you can style them, and the way you can adjust the individual characters.